Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Gala Music AMA. I am Taco, Gala Community Manager, uh, living my best life, getting to talk to musicians all day. So this is pretty great. Uh, I'm going to start off by saying Gabriel couldn't make it to the AMA, so apologies for that. But I think the graphic only had Triz on it anyway, so maybe that was fate. And so... Uh, Triz, welcome to your first official AMA with Gala. Hey, what's up? I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm going to start by saying I'm a little irritated. Uh, <laughs> because for people who don't know how Inside Gala works right now, we have people who are in charge of strategy and reaching out to artists and like building out the platform. Yeah. But they let everybody kind of jump in and talk to artists. And so I'm, I'm talking to a few people. Um, and so I think of it as kind of like a fantasy sports team. And so when the people I talk to join up, I think of them as like my artists. Yeah. And so talking to somebody like you, I wasn't your point of contact. Yeah. And no. So I think it was Mike. So Mike, Mike, yeah. Is to claim you one of his artists. Yeah. And now having like a deeper dive and finding out about your music and your career and like, where your head is like, oh man, like I, <laughs> yeah, my team, but you're on somebody else's team, and that kind of bums me out a little. Bit. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> so, uh, how did you get involved with Gala? Just to start out, did you reach out to us, or did Mike find you? How did this happen? Okay, so when the Mount Westmore thing was being promoted, I was like really into that because I, I, um, I'm a fan of you know, you know, Cube, you know, Snoop, E40, and Too Short. And I'm from the West Coast, so, like, I was real interested in the release. So when I found out it was going to be an NFT release, I really got interested because I'm not really that savvy on the NFT community, but I, I know, like, the concept of it. You know what I mean? So um, I was seeing I seen that Gala was, you know, presenting the project, so I went to the website. I started doing research, reading around. And from off top, the colors and everything popped out to me, so that just made it interesting alone to stay on the website. I started looking it up. And I seen that they had like a sign up form and everything like, you know, to because you guys were launching soon. So I, I took it upon myself to, you know, sign up and hopefully somebody was getting back, got back to me. And Mike ended up reaching out maybe a couple few, a few months after that. And, yeah, that's that's basically how everything unfolded. And then he invited me to a party you guys had in L.A. I met him in person. Uh, everything seemed real, like cool and genuine and legit. So, yeah, it was it was a no brainer for me. Oh, that's great. So, so you reached out to us. So, Mike only, I'm going to give him half credit. <laughs> You're like kind of on his team, but not really on his team. I'm going to say that <laughs> better about that. Um, so, you, you're technically onboarding, you're joining us as an emerging artist, yeah. which for me is a really broad definition because it means a lot. Um, I look at you and like you're coming on as emerging, but I don't, you don't look emerging to me. You've been making music for a long time. You have a, like a strong follower base. You've been making good, real music with real producers. And yeah. you're, this is what you do. You're a professional musician, yeah. um, which is great. Let's talk, talk to me about how you got started in music. Cause it's been a while. Yeah. So I first started like writing music when I was nine, like, you know, writing uh, on a pen and pad and jotting down notes and just scribble, scribble, scrabble and stuff like that. And then over time, like I started to I, I like recorded myself at home on like, you know, the basic um, like voice recorder on a Microsoft work or uh, on Microsoft Windows. Like it was like 2006 and you could only record like 50 seconds and I would like play a beat. It sounded really terrible, but I was just trying to do something, you know. As time progressed, I was just like upgrade my equipment, uh, upgrade my computer. And I was always just, you know, recording myself. You know what I'm saying? And um, from there, I was passing out mixtapes and stuff at school. MySpace days, I was uploading music. You know what I mean? Dat Piff, I was uploading mixtapes. Every year since 2006, I've released something. I've, since I was 14, I've released the tape every single year. Like track record is good. And so, uh, yeah, that's really how I got started. Just, you know, being consistent and staying with the times. Any Anytime it was a platform that I could use at my advantage to put my music out there, I did. Yeah. Awesome. How, so releasing music since you were 14. Yeah. When did you get to a point where you thought to yourself, 
wow, I'm actually good at this. Uh, or was it the whole time you were nine years old? Well, no, it wasn't, definitely wasn't the whole time. <laughs> it definitely took some time to where I was like, yo, you know, I could live off of this. I, I could be comfortable or whatever. Um, yeah, I realized that, I would say, after I got out of high school, after I graduated and I dropped this mixtape called New West, uh, I was, like, taking it more seriously. My, If you notice, like, my album covers were starting to elevate. They were starting to look a little better. Uh, I was starting to run it like a business instead of running it just like me being a rapper. So that when I got out of high school, I started to realize, okay, this is something that I could go with. I'm, I already got a fan base locally. Um, I'm already making a little money because I'm selling my tapes out of my car and stuff like that. So when I started to see the income and I was like, I, I can't work for nobody. So I, I ain't never had no job. I probably had a job like two or three times and I've never been there for more than two weeks. I've always lived off of my music. But that's also an testament. Like that's also an uh, um help from my parents because you know they were they were very supportive in me getting out of high school and saying you know you could take the rapping thing full head on i went to la recording school in la uh in la off of sunset i was there for maybe like six seven months learning uh engineering i wasn't interested in that so i left and i ended up going on tour with brother and tongue and tech nine um for like two and a half months and that's when i got my like foot in the door when i was like okay i'm here and that was 2013. Wow, that's awesome. And it's great that you had the support from your family to say, yeah, go do it. We support you. Mm -hmm. Be an artist. That's, that's amazing. There's yeah. so many musicians who want to be in a position where they're living off of their music. And, yeah. I mean, obviously it didn't come easy. Like, you've been working at it hard for a long time. For sure. Um, yeah, but that's great. I think our community appreciates that when they see artists, like, working, like they're, they're yeah. getting out. That's really great. Yeah. Um, so uh, I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole with mm -hmm. your content. Mm -hmm. um, I was on your YouTube, and you used to do um, a Thursday, a, a Triz Thursday yeah. um, recap. Why yeah. why'd you stop doing that? Those are super fun. Uh, just me being uh, just slacking off. That I have that no excuse <laughs> for that. Slacking off and then getting into other ventures. I got severe adhd so my attention span isn't that long so like if i'm if i'm working on something and then something else catches my attention i got a new idea i'll let this slip by the wayside by mistake and then forget and then yeah i just let the trish thursdays go fall by the wayside but my my wife she always told me i need to start doing it again i'm glad you brought it up i actually should start doing it again yeah uh I keep telling the community I'm going to be doing a weekly recap, and they probably think that I'm also slacking off because I haven't started doing it yet. <laughs> so it's a good opportunity. Maybe I'll, I'll start doing it like we should be doing it. Yeah, um, yeah. There was one I watched where you, you had a surprise birthday party. And yeah. Just, you were just so surprised to see everybody. <laughs> it's been so fun watching it. Like, you just making the rounds and like, oh, and you're here, and you're here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, my uh, wife, she threw that for me for my 27th birthday. That's awesome. Yeah. My biggest discovery yeah. on Tris Thursdays is, and something I did not know, is you performed at the gathering of the Juggalos. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> How yeah. did that happen? Okay, so basically, like I, like I said, my first tour was with Tech 9 and Brother Lynch, and like a lot of their fans are Juggalos, so... I was I was running around with them, so it was inevitable. And I had did the gathering in 2013 prior to the Eclipse you seen with Lynch. I was a, his hype man and everything. He would let me perform one song on his set. So that was my first introduction to the Juggalo world. So like two years being into that world, I did the initiative again. I hit up the festival and I'm like, man, I'm trying to come perform. And they were like, we can't pay you, but we'll make sure you got you a slot. We'll give you a good time set. If you can get out here and perform, come do it. They gave me a, a, a midnight time set on the lowest stage, but the sound was good. I had like 500 people waiting on me to come up on stage. It was like a really good time, and I didn't get paid, but I got the exposure, and my career been going crazy with the Juggalos ever since. They still support me heavy. That's amazing. I just went to my first gathering this year. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was just there in August. It's been I, – I don't know if I'd say – I'm a juggalo. I yeah. listened to um, ICP in high school. 
yeah. and you kind of follow along. Um, and the gathering just one of those things that you see and you're like, man, I just have to go to one of those. Yeah. Because the videos are so crazy. Yeah, it's and, so crazy. And it's really like that. You get there and I have so much respect for that community because they're so close knit. Like it's yeah. really a family. And yeah. it's like everybody knows each other and they're so supportive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if you're an artist on stage and you're not doing well, they will let you know. They will let uh, you have it. <laughs> I don't remember the name. There was one artist. It's him. He, he started doing a song and like his music cut out and he got flustered and the crowd turned like immediately and yeah. started yelling at him, you effed up. You yeah. Yeah. like and like he he left the stage like he just like oh I'm out it was they will, like oh wow, that was crazy yeah they will get you up out of there they threw bottles and all type of stuff at Tila Tequila like a few years ago and they yeah. made her get off the stage she hated it a lot of people they will run you out of that festival quick <laughs> yeah for sure but if they like you yeah then then you're you're good yeah the juggalos that I tell people all the time they save careers. Like they had Vanilla Ice one year and it was crazy. It was like backed up. He was on the main stage, thousands of people. Like they literally, like if you fall off and you were a mainstream artist one time and you want to try to get your shit off, man, the Juggalos will be very accepting of you for sure. For sure. Yeah, as long as you show up and deliver, then yeah, they'll they'll definitely support you, which is yeah. it's about going to festivals and having the support. Um, yeah. Terrible getting you know, Fago bottles throwing at you and run off the stage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't I didn't throw Fago at anybody. <laughs> everyone watching the stream. I'm supposed to. I was clapping like I'm supposed to. I mostly stayed out of the way because it's if you're in the crowd, it's that's dangerous. And I'm old yeah. now. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll get real dangerous. It'll get real dangerous in those crowds. Fago everywhere, people throwing bottles, people throwing all yeah, type of stuff. Like, Julia bottle just up in the air falling down on people. It's like I, I can't do that, but I can have a good time. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, I saw he did that. So no, oh, that's really cool and yeah. different. Like, if, you haven't, if you haven't been to a gathering, you can't really explain the yeah. vibe of it. Um, yeah, definitely. So that was a while ago. Yeah. Um, you tell me about the new album that he dropped. Okay, uh, it's called Baseline Cavi. My uh, the person who produced it is Mike Seven Summers. He was actually Tech Nine's producer uh, for over twenty years. Um, he produced uh, a lot of Brother Lynch Hunk stuff. He produced some stuff for Eminem, Kendrick Lamar. Like he has a very extensive res resume. I had became a fan of him when I was like in high school, listening to Tech and Lynch and stuff. So um, he moved out to LA like two years ago, and he wanted to get some work in. And so Dave Weiner, uh, who used to work for Priority and also used to work for Strange Hack, contacted me about working with Seven. And we got a few records done. We recorded a few jams. And then we started to see like this pattern of like the stuff we were making. And it was starting to sound really, really good. And so we were like, man, we should just do a project. It started off as like, yo, we're just going to do like an EP. But then as things started to progress, we look up and we're like 10 songs deep. So we like, man, we need to make an album. And then we started to, you know, put it in a sequence of how we wanted it to sound, uh, what features we wanted, and that's how it came together. And I named it Baseline Cavi because Baseline is the street that runs through the Inland Empire where I'm from. And it's a lot, it's like a lot of stuff goes down on Baseline from prostitution to drugs, all that. And that's where I get the word Cavi from because Cavi is, you know, crack, dope. So Baseline Cavi is Baseline dope. Like, you know, I'm dope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, um that you're dropping with Gala yeah. uh, was a, basically a bonus track for that album that didn't get included on it. Yeah, so that song was supposed to be on Baseline Cavi and it's featuring. Oh, actually, I don't want. I don't think I should reveal that yet. But shit, I don't know. If my, I don't know if I'm supposed to. But yeah, there's a song on there that I was supposed to put on the album that's featuring some art of some really big LA artists, and um, I'm I I was gonna put it out on there, but it just didn't sonically sound right. So I was like, I'm gonna take it off. And I was like, I got an idea. I could give it out exclusively to like the diehards. You know what I mean? So yeah, it was supposed to go on the album, but it didn't make it. Nice. We like that though. That happens. You make an album and there's a great track, but doesn't quite fit in with the other songs. Yeah, 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 for sure. It happens all the time. 
Yeah. Well, that's cool. Um, I know that everyone's pretty excited about that. As like you, I think announced that you're going to join Gala before we even announced it. Uh, you put yeah. it out on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> I was yeah, like, I, 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 I text Mike and I was like, "Yo, is it cool?" He's like, "Yeah, go ahead." I was like, "All right, for sure." I wanted to ask first. <laughs> Yeah, Mike doesn't care. Don't listen to that guy. <laughs> He's like, yeah, do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> that's great. That's funny. So um, we're supposed to have Gabriel Royal, who mm. I don't know if you are familiar with him. Mm. He was meant to be on the AMA, so I had some questions for him. <laughs> uh, he's not here. I'm going to ask you some okay. of his questions. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. So your I think best known for being um, a performer, a busker in the subways in Brooklyn. How did you get started in that? <laughs> well, you know, I just kind of found my way, you know, doing my thing, walking around the streets of Brooklyn, playing my music, ended up in the subway, you know, and they picked up on it, you know? <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> That's exactly how I imagined it would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the real. Yeah. That I'm hoping I can still do an actual AMA with Gabriel. He seems like a super cool guy. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to check his music out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so we do have at least one question from the community. Okay. Um, I don't know if they've asked you this already or not. Mm -hmm. Our community loves utility. Mm -hmm. They love getting perks. Yeah. Um, and so wanted to know if you have any ideas for any perks with your nf for your nft or somebody buys it um yeah might be them uh yeah me and my uh me and my team was talking about possibly like doing something to where like it'll come with like getting to meet me at a show getting a free meet and greet so anytime i do a show in your area you know what i mean if you come and you have the uh the nft or the token i get i guess that's what it's called the token um you'll be able to meet me you know what i mean you possibly get um signed merch you know what i mean that i give out signed cds signed shirts so like exclusive stuff that you would normally have to pay for at shows you sh you would get for free you would be like a part of my entourage for the day you know like that that would, that would be real dope i feel like as a fan if i was a fan of somebody i feel like that would be really dope i think that would be amazing i think that's what people want like to go to a show and to meet the people who they're following and they're listening to on spotify and it's like oh i can hang out like that's, yeah. that's great. Really cool. um, speaking of merch yeah. you have been selling your album um i think i saw on spot on um twitter mm -hmm. that if you get your album the other not the nft album i'll yeah. obviously buy this track yeah. Um, so the whole album yeah then you can get like a merch pack from you is that still happening yeah it's happening until friday if you purchase the album on itunes or bandcamp or amazon and you show proof then you get a free baseline cavi t-shirt a signed uh baseline cavi cd and a sticker and that's all worth like 50 bucks and i'm taking the financial l but i want to give my fans an opportunity who can't the fans who can't afford like you know merch that may be too expensive for them you can get it for just 8.99 you know what i'm saying and if my album is only 8.99 you get you buy that you get you a shirt cd and a sticker i think it's a good deal okay. right. yeah that's that's almost too good of a deal <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> nice of you i was i saw it when i was going through your twitter i'm like wow that's that's a really good deal because if i would just spend 15 or 20 bucks on your shirt but yeah. if I can get the shirt and everything else, you know, I, yeah. I'm gonna do. I'm of course gonna do that. Yeah, and a signed CD with my signature and Mike Summer signature on it. Yeah, yeah that, you shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> That's too much. That's too generous. Yeah, it's too generous. That's why I'm like, you better jump on it now. <laughs> yeah. you, you need a business manager. For <laughs> <I'm> real. <laughs> awesome. Uh, I didn't have any other specific questions is there anything you wanted to plug or talk about what you have coming up for shows uh yeah uh so i'm dropping the baseline cavi website so it's going to be baselinecavi.com and you'll be able to get all the merch new merch lighters uh rolling trays shirts beanies we're getting ready for the winter drop uh sweatsuits uh the whole nine yards socks we got little knickknacks in there, $10, $15 type merchandise. You know what I mean? Everything is going to be affordable. 
Um, it's gonna be unreleased music coming out on Baseline Cavi. Um, it's just it's a whole nother it's a whole nother brand from what Triz is, but you know what I'm saying. I got that coming. I got this show with Conway the Machine and TF coming up uh, in Los Angeles on November 12th. Um, yeah, and then the rest of the year I'm gonna just be promoting this album. I also got the uh, the uh, what's it called the Baseline Cavi Deluxe Edition coming out with like six additional songs. So yeah, I'm pretty uh, big. So two things for that. Yeah. If you're selling lighters and roller trays, clearly you've been in our Discord and you see that we have um, some enthusiasts in our, <laughs> in our um, yeah. and also save some of that exclusive music for the gala community. Oh, for sure. <laughs> for sure. I, I real fans coming up for you soon. Um, yeah, for sure. We're gonna need some of that. Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, this was a lot of fun. Um, thanks for joining me. Uh, this was great. I think people are going to enjoy this conversation. Um, no if you're not in Discord, you should hop in Discord just to come, you know, okay. say yeah, hi. Mike, this there. Yeah, Mike told me about it. I, uh, I think I, I joined yesterday. Or I need to get in there. But, yeah, I think he sent me the link, though. I sent him my login and my little number, the little uh, pin number they give you. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. We'll get you sorted out. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and good luck on the drop tomorrow. I'm I'm gonna pick one up just because okay. like your music and you seem like a super cool guy. Okay, and, thank and you. I appreciate it. I thought you're gonna give me fifty bucks worth of merchandise. <laughs> better off to buy your NFT. Like I feel like I still owe you some money. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. All right. Uh, so thanks everyone who's watching the stream. Have a great night, and we'll see everybody later. Okay. Thanks.